warm welcome to Majesty Christian TV Network. My name is Apostle Larry Dog, you know, coming to you all the way uh, from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Shall we pray? Father God, we honor you this hour. We pray that you will touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our innermost being, that it shall become receptive to your word. I pray also that you will give us the utterance to declare what you want us to hear and grant that we shall be blessed as we give heed to the utterance of your word. I pray over whoever is watching right now and whoever is listening right now, I pray their lives will be blessed at the entrance of your word. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Apostle Larry and uh, this Hour, I just want to share a word of encouragement to you uh, so that you can stand firm and you can know that come what may, things will turn around for good. So my, the title of my message is Fear Not, God is with you. Fear Not, God is with you. I'm taking my scripture reading from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. And it reads from the verse 1. It says, But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not Seas uh, will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give uh, Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Sheba in your stead, since you were precious and honored in my sight, and because you, I love you, I will give men in exchange for you, and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid. For I am with you. Hallelujah. The word clearly is coming to encourage somebody. It says, fear not. Do not be afraid. These are very, very difficult and troubling times. In the month of July, in fact, in 2014, I should say, uh, there some of the disasters which have happened worldwide, you know, especially uh, air, air disasters, you know, the disappearance of the Malaysian air flight, a plane, planes being shot down in Ukraine, um, in a plane just crashed in Iran just I think yesterday or so, um, and the one in Mali, um, and then the Malaysian one which happened over the Ukrainian-Russian border, the eastern part of Ukraine, you can see that there is something in the atmosphere. And it's enough to put fear in people's hearts. And for those who are believers, there might be also a bit of apprehension, people wondering where they stand. Now, this prophecy which Isaiah uh, is giving here is for the people of Israel. And we are actually a part of Israel, spiritually speaking, because we are now incorporated in the Israeli family because we are what? The children of Abraham. So we have that connection, spiritually speaking. And so this prophecy also concerns us. And so in a season of so much fear and uncertainty, people can lose heart. We're sharing this message this morning in church. Because sometimes you look at things and you see the way things are going, not according to your expectation or your plan, uh, and you don't see how to turn this around, and you find yourself almost powerless. But God is saying that no matter what you see now, it doesn't mean I have deserted you. It doesn't mean that you have been forsaken. When you go through the waters and the fires, you have to understand that I am still with you. Hallelujah. You see, we have come to believe that a Christian or a child of God must not go through difficulties. It is wrong. It's a sign of a curse or, 
or, or that, that, God, that God is not with you or that God doesn't love you. And that's why people go through difficulties. This is a belief. Some people ignorantly have given to themselves, which is totally contrary to Scripture. Hallelujah. This, which is totally contrary to Scripture. One of the amazing things you find in Scripture uh, is how God uses affliction to develop character and maturity in us. And that's why He lets us know that He is with us regardless of what we may be going through. Once the Israelites were in the wilderness, you find out that those who were grumbling a lot, complaining about the little discomfort they had to uh, go through, all of those grumblers and, and, and complainers and, and, and you know, uh, who were pity partying all the time, <laughs> Pitying themselves. Oh, how we wish we had died in Egypt. Look at this place. Only we miss the lettuce, the cucumber. We miss all those nice things we used to have and enjoy in Egypt. And if you're going to complain, the Bible says that all those grumblers never made it to the promised land. Now, was God with them in the wilderness? Yes. Very present. Yet, God limited the things they could enjoy. God restrained the blessings which He would have given to them for a purpose and for a reason. And so why would God come through with a message like this and say, I am with you? It means that God is seeing the struggles and the difficulties these people are going through. He sees it and He wants them to know that it's not a sign that He has abandoned them it's not an indication that he has forsaken them, but it's to let them know that he is very much around. I want you to know, fear not, because God is very much around with you. Hallelujah. He's very much in your life. And so you must understand that your struggles are not a sign that God has taken you or God is punishing you. Because we always associate struggles and difficulties with divine punishment. But it's not so. Hallelujah. It is never so. And so here, God is encouraging His people and to let them stand firm because there are greater days ahead. And as you are going through your situation, whatever that might be, it might be that uh, your finances are not really, you know, measuring up, uh, you know, you're having a struggle making ends meet, or you're having some family challenges uh, or a challenge on your job or you want to really, you know, <coughs> attain some, some heights in life, but you just can't figure out your way. And you are praying every day, you are seeking God's face, you are sowing seeds, you are doing all kinds of things, trusting God for those things to happen, but you don't seem to be making any headway. The message for you is fear not. The word for you is what? Fear not. God is working out a way. To honor and to elevate you. Hallelujah. In fact, I've come to realize that when sometimes Christians go through uh, battles and challenges which are actually inexplicable, it is because God has prepared a testimony that is waiting ahead of them. And so stop crying and stop stop you know looking for sins somewhere you, you have confessed all the sins that you know. And you, you still are not satisfied that God has forgiven you. Know that God loves you. Know that God cares about you. Know that God has not put you at the back of his mind. Or, at, or behind him uh, in order to forget you. He said to them, it's a fear not. When you go through um, the rivers and the fires and the waters, I am with you. Why? Because I love you. Would God punish and would God afflict someone he loves? No. A father can only, um, you know, take a son or a child through some lessons in order to mature that person. You see, it is what? To build up that person. It is to what? Raise up the level of the person's faith. There are certain things which we only learn as a result of what we go through. It's not everything you have to be taught like you are taught in the classroom. Certain things you gain 
by experience. Hallelujah. Your faith develops as you learn to trust God as you work with Him. And so, God said to the people, He says, fear not because I am with you. I want you to know that I created you. I perfectly understand whatever you are experiencing and I have already planned to make some exchanges to give people in exchange for you. Hallelujah. So do not be afraid for I am with you. I will bring your children from the west from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. To the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar. Hallelujah. And my daughters from the ends of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I made, whom I formed and made. Praise the Lord. And so, in this uh, uh, chapter of Isaiah, there's so much encouragement. And that I want to share with you. Because I don't know what you're going through, what you're coping with, the, any difficulties you might be you know, dealing with, uncertainties, and, and, and you, know, you don't really know. You, you're not so sure. Is God really still on my side? Or am I alone? And that is why I'm bringing to you this word. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. There's a woman in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 13, and uh, it's quite remarkable. The Bible says that that woman um, was in the synagogue and Jesus was preaching. And the Bible says that the woman had been afflicted with an infirmity, infirmity and she was bent over and she had been that way for 18 years. Now, let's make a little calculation. If that woman has suffered for 18 years, if you take 18 years from the number 30, which let's, which let's assume that was the age of 30, uh, the age of Jesus at the time, it may be it may be 30 or 31, you know, certainly not, not not too far from 30. But if let's say Jesus was 30 years at the time he met this woman, all right. Now, 30 minus 18 gives us what 12, which means that Jesus was 12 years old when this woman began to suffer and to have that affliction which resulted in her being bowed down. And I believe with all my heart that being a Jew, and that's why Jesus called her daughter of Abraham. Jesus said it was not right for that daughter of Abraham to, to have been bound. Now, if Jesus qualified her as a daughter of Abraham and not a daughter of Belial, which means that there was something godly and righteous about the woman. And that's why Jesus said he had to intervene because he did not, it wasn't proper for that woman to continue suffering. And that was the time for her deliverance had come when Jesus, you know, was ministering there. Praise the Lord. I declare unto you that whatever you are going through, like somebody says, it has an expiry date. There's a time when the affliction you are going through will no more prevail. It wouldn't have even the a power to hold you any longer. In Jesus' name, therefore fear not, fear not. Whatever you are going through, you will be delivered. You will pull through. You will be set free. God will come through for you in Jesus' name. So that woman had endured an affliction for 18 years. Can you imagine how a daughter of Abraham can suffer? And sometimes when we see people going through things, we better not accuse, we better not point figures because we have no clue what is happening and what God is doing. When you are an immature preacher or minister, and somebody who is growing up in the things of God, you can easily begin to make or draw those conclusions because those are the basic things you learn. You think that every problem and every tragedy, every misfortune, every hassle, everything that goes wrong in the life of a child of God or a person is because of what? Sin. And that's why when the disciples of Jesus asked him a question about the man who was born blind, he had to tell them that that problem was not because of uh, the sin of the man or the sin of his parents. Hallelujah. Therefore, it's important that we understand this thing. It is for the theology to know and to, and to begin to accept that problems people have or go through are always because of, of, of a sinful 
uh, source or, or cause or you know issue in their lives. And so that woman, Jesus called her a daughter of Abraham. And he laid his hands upon her. And the Bible says he straightened up immediately. Praise God. Thank God for the power and the name of Jesus. Thank you for such a glorious name. Oh my God. How Jesus in an instant can turn people's lives around. I pray that as this word comes to you, you also will be encouraged for you to know, for you to hold on. I believe God was speaking to his people through the prophet Isaiah for them to know and to understand. Because some of them have become so lax and so weak that they could not serve God anymore. They couldn't offer the sacrifices. They couldn't present themselves to God as they used to because they lacked the understanding of what was happening in their lives. I have come to let you know that you do not have to fear because God has prepared a way of escape for you in Jesus' name. Say, I hear you. Verse 10 says, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me. Can you imagine? God is trying to let them know that, hey, whatever you are going through, I am in control. It may be painful to you right now, but it is not for you to worry because I have measured the issues and I've measured the trials, I've measured the problems, I've measured whatever you are coping with right now, you're having to go through right now. I've measured them. And I know that you can go through. That's why I'm standing by you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm standing by you in the heat, in the water, in the flood. I am standing by you. Know that I made those things and therefore you will not be overrun, overwhelmed. Praise the Lord. It says, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be any after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and have saved and proclaimed and I, I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am He. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? Hallelujah. God is assuring you. God is assuring us, giving us confidence in what He's doing. He says we will not be put to shame. We will not be overrun because he is standing beside us. The scripture says, No temptation has befallen us which is, which is beyond what any man can handle. But with every temptation, with every trial, there is a way of escape. I want to tell you, there is a way out of whatever you are facing right now. Any fear, any uncertainty, that you are coping with right now, I want you to know there is a way. First keep. Say I hear you. Hallelujah. I want to just um, end with uh, another example which we'll find in um, the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 1. It's about a lady called Elizabeth. Elizabeth, and let me just give you a little bit about her background so that you will, you will know. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1 from, from the verse 5, it says, In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zachariah who belonged to, a, to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth, who also was a descendant of Aaron. So these two are from the priestly lineage. Both of them were upright in the sight of God because somebody, people can be from a priestly family and still be what? On upright or unrighteous before God. So these were priestly in their family line, but also they were what? Upright. And the Bible says that they were observing all the commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. You see? God does some strength in sometimes. And we, we struggle to understand. 
So what he needs us to know is to have the confidence and assurance that he is with us. Amen? He is with us. And that is the, that's the principal thing we need to know. That God is with us. No matter what you are going through, just know, just remind yourself, just tell yourself that God is with me. Amen. Once you tell yourself this, the fears and the harassment which the enemy keeps throwing at us, you know, you get a feeling like, oh no, you're not good enough. You're not praying enough. You're not fasting enough. Oh, all this and that and that. Your enemies are, are getting more powerful than you. Your enemies are fighting you. Your enemies are, are charming you. You know, you begin to have all kinds of weird ideas about what may be happening to you. And you feel like God is far from you. No, 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 no. He said to them, because those people, the Israelites at that point in time, when Isaiah was speaking to them, they had... So they had become so cold and they were not worshipping God the way they used, to, they used to. They were not bringing sacrifices and all that. Because they felt they were going through too much. And the fear in their lives was overwhelming. And that's why God had to encourage them through the prophet Isaiah. And I'm encouraging you also right now by his holy word. That you are not alone. That no matter what you are going through, God says fear not for I am with you. I am with you even in that situation. Just knowing that God is standing by you alone gives you the power to go through whatever it is because it will soon come to an end. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Well, the story of Elizabeth, you know already. So the angel, an angel came to the husband whilst Zechariah was ministering in the temple. An angel showed up and told him you are going to have a child and he was of course skeptical about it. And the Bible says that the angel told him, "You, he will be dumb and not be able to speak until the prophecy was fulfilled." Lo and behold, Elizabeth became pregnant, and after nine months, she had a baby, John. On the day they were naming the child, Zachariah's <coughs> tongue was loosened. Hallelujah! Awesome, isn't it? So that which was like a, a curse, she might, people might have, said, might have said, "Oh." Maybe there's a curse in your family. Or they might have said, oh, uh, uh, God, uh, you know, um, Elizabeth was, was barren because, you know, she did some, there's some sin in her life, you know. Or, 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 or they are a prison family, but there must be some sin in their lives. And so we try to explain some of these things with some of those, you know, childish ideas about what's right or wrong. Only God knows the truth about everything. And so maybe they are telling you also the same. There's a sin in your life, or you are not good enough, or you're not prayerful enough, or God has put, you know, or somebody is fighting you in the spirit. There's a witch in your father's home or your mother's home and this and that and that. All those theories and all those hasty explanations which we, we normally hear these days. But listen to me. Whatever it is, even that woman in Luke chapter 13, who was bound by the devil himself. The Bible says that the time came when Jesus broke the bondage. I declare unto you that as long as you stay close to God and God stays close to you, that bondage will be broken. That fear will lose its place. You will be released to enter into the inheritance which God has for you. Say, I hear you. Say, I hear you. I just want you to know and be encouraged. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Whatever you may be facing today, I just want you to know that you do not have to fear. For God is with you. Hallelujah. God is with you. The, the, the storms may be rough. The weather may be rough. But you know what? God has measured how far it can go. God is right with you. And that's what I want to leave you with. Remember, God is with you. And God is with me too. God is with our household. God is with our loved ones. Do not fear. Do not take the accusing tongues of men and women against yourself. <coughs> and, and pity yourself and put yourself down. And get discouraged and lose your, your, your joy and your power and your zest for God. Don't let those sins get to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I say unto you, Fear not. 
Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father God, let the few words I've spoken encourage and empower my listeners and my viewers that anything they are dealing with and facing today in their lives, they will receive the power to stand firm until you bring them out of it. I give you praise, I give you praise, and I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What a joy it's been to share this message with you. And I pray that uh, it shall really minister to you and will strengthen you. I look forward to coming your way again next time because, so we can share the word of God. And please feel free. The number is on the screen. You can call. If you have a testimony to share or to write an email, just let us know how the Lord is blessing you and touching your lives through the messages we are preaching on this channel right here on Majesty Christian TV. God bless you. I wish you a very fine week. Until I see you again next time. Bye-bye.